All right, let's do this. How's everybody doing tonight? We'll give it a minute to get going here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play on the on the game map, but we'll let it go for a few minutes before we try to speed it up at all. It is time. How's it going, Jason Wright? I uh, want to point out one little change I made since the last episode. Uh, and that is uh, that we created a new division in Reynolds, Second Corps of the Army of the Potomac, uh, under Lou Wallace. And I have moved the uh, 1st Maryland Orioles Black Hat Brigade, uh, the Iron Brigade, and Lafayette Sons into that division. Hey, Enrico, how's it going in Italy? Yeah, Jason, I hear you. Um, and uh, <laughs> USS Torsk, you are not wrong, sir. Um, I, I will ask one thing of you, um, and that is that while um, I appreciate that everyone has strong opinions on things, I'm totally fine if folks say stuff about what's going on in the news. Um, I just ask that if you're going to talk about it, number one, you keep kind of the political part out of it um, as much as you can. And, of course, be respectful to each other. We did create a current events channel on Discord, and I've gone ahead and, and waived the rule of no talking current politics on the Discord server. As long as people continue to be respectful to each other while talking about it, I understand people need to have an outlet to talk about that stuff. But we're here tonight to get our minds off of that and to talk about the actual civil war that did happen <laughs> and uh, to continue, continue this game. So we ended the last episode with that epic victory, uh, once again fighting at Grafton, where the Army of Pennsylvania with that small force uh, kind of ran around for a little while while we waited for the Army of the Ohio and the Army of the Potomac to come reinforce. And we were able to pull off a, a bloody, bloody victory there. Enrico, we'll be okay. But thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I, I also have this new Army of the Mississippi I don't know if that's the guy I want to have be in charge of that, though. Um, I don't know who this Rogers guy is. Happy New Year. Um, let's look at this commander of the Army of the Mississippi. Yeah, not great. I think we can do better. Uh, it's not bad, not bad. I think I need somebody a little better, though. I'm just looking for a decent commander that I can put in charge of that force. Joseph Revere, he's a grandson of Paul Revere. And John King's not bad. Let's throw him in there. All right, so this is just going to be three brigades of cavalry, and I'm going to use them as kind of a raiding force into the Confederacy. Speaking of raiding, see this? Look at all the fires that are happening. Uh, I had the Army of the Tennessee, uh, I have the cavalry for that force set, uh, or I had it set to raid. I just switched it to guard, but I had it set to raid. And so they have raided all of the surrounding territory around the army, and you see what they did. Zach, you, Zach thank you for that. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a Grierson unit. Hey, Stephen, hello in Australia. So you're what? Uh, let's see, Sydney's 20 hours ahead of me, so it's what, about early afternoon there in Australia? So let's go ahead and speed things up a little bit, and we'll see what happens. That Army of Illinois is working its way down. None of its units are, act or Army of the Mississippi, none of its units are actually active yet. We've got 16 days, 20 days, and 15 days, so we've got about three weeks until that force is ready to go. But we do have Sherman completely. Isn't it appropriate that Sherman's the one that's burning everything? But I don't see any current forces in the area. I know the Army of the Potomac headquarters is down here somewhere. Actually, it looks like that is just a single army 
force. It's not like a multi-core one. Uh, so that's probably who we're going to end up facing. But I'm going to go ahead and move Sherman down to take Corinth. It's an important rail hub. We're going to hold the Army of the Cumberland in Nashville for now. Grumblebee, yeah, I don't I haven't normally used the raid function. Nikita, how's it going in New York? 9:30 in the morning, okay. In uh in Australia. So are you on the west coast of Australia then? Cuz I think Sydney's a little further along than that, isn't it? Mason Mouse, nice. The chocolate beer and fries nation. So we'll see what happens there. We've got McClellan sitting in Charleston, kind of keeping an eye on Pogue's Corps. 20,000 men there. Oh, dang. Army of, the Pennsylvania, Army of Pennsylvania is taking some heavy casualties here. Let's go ahead and pull them back. So the Army of Shenandoah rather than retreating, appears to be still well intact. So we're going to send Sheridan to go deal with them. Army of Northern Virginia is working its way over there. That's just a headquarters, though. I really can't shift McClellan because Pogue is on his way that direction. Antor, I think things have calmed down in the U.S. now because there's a... Um, there's a curfew in Washington, and it seems like everybody's pretty well cleared out now, and they're moving the National Guard in, which is like our reserve army force. Um, Aaron, west of Ireland, very cool. Um, HOI4 world tension be like United States 97%. Um, Scotty, the raid, raid doesn't help with the funds, but it does help supply the army that is raiding. Okay, Shenandoah is pulling out now. We're going to continue moving Sheridan's core over this. So he's got 30,000 men in one core here. I could probably make a move south. Oh, Army of the Shenandoah is pulled away. So it was me that was pursuing with my small force there. Half of them are casualties now, though. We are into the winter, or nearly so, so um, we're going to suffer more attrition than we normally do. Okay, what's going on? Oh, this is new. I, I installed an update right before we started. So now it's showing us the information about the units involved right up here on the screen. And it shows the commanders. I like this. This is very cool. Yeah, Joshua, you make an excellent point. And I kind of... On my Facebook, I, I, the thing I, I posted trying to just kind of find the middle ground was I said, you know, um, if you were complaining about the riots last year that were happening in America, but you're not saying anything about what happened today, you're a hypocrite. And if you said nothing then, but you're complaining now, you're also a hypocrite. It's either wrong or it's not, you know, that's the kind of thing I, that's the way I look at it. I didn't like it last year and I don't like it now. Will we see a state fall to the Union? Well, we had West Virginia. I don't know if we can see another one from there or not. Let's see. Hey, Phil, what's going on? Glad you survived. <laughs> Battle of Gailey Bridge. Pretty even numbers on both sides here. So this is the Army of the Ohio under McClellan. About 24,000 men. Surprise he doesn't think the Confederates have 10 times that number. So let's go ahead and take a look and see. We are on, is this the Carnifex? This is the uh, the Crossroads Battlefield, isn't it? Or Carnifex Ferry. This is one of the new battlefields. They just added this one. There's Kessler's Cross Lane. So this is West Virginia. This is a map that's actually in West Virginia. So that's cool. First time fighting on this map. Let's 
let's figure out where we want to be here because I haven't fought this one. So you can see the, the beautiful ground of West Virginia in the fall here. I like the idea of Kessler's cross, cross lanes as a spot to defend. Where is he coming in? He's coming in from over here. Oh, but he's already up here. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and move over toward cross lanes and kind of go from there. We had snow in Bavaria. Very cool. James, I, I'll have to check that book out. I haven't heard of that one. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to move Mitchell's division. Let's get a look at the terrain here. I'm going to move Mitchell's division to about right there. Of course, not knowing where the heck these guys are. Custer's got the cavalry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send Custer over to this objective here. See if we can spot these guys. But I'm going to bring the rest of the army back here to defend for now. Well, let's see. Where, where's the objectives? There's a lot of objectives over here. So maybe that's where we need to be. Hold on, guys. Sorry. And you're in timeout. Like I said, two things I won't tolerate. One is getting into the politics of it. And two is attacking other people's views. Okay. So I think we'll move over here instead. Rather than there. And we'll get up to this high ground. Oh, don't go that way, though. Can we not cross anywhere over... Oh, we can't cross anywhere over here. Okay. That is not an option. How about right here? So that's Mitchell... Butterfield, we're going to bring him in, maybe to right here for now. Zach, thank you, sir. Hopefully you're, uh, hopefully that shirt comes soon for your dad. Hope he likes it. So where did I send Custer's Cavalry now? He's going up over this way. We'll go ahead and allow that to continue. Mark, thank you. Appreciate that. Oh, Mason, that's, uh, you know, I haven't actually read the latest updates, at least not for a few days. But I did see when I went to boot up the game about a half hour ago that there was a, an update. That's cool, Zach. I'm actually wearing my uh, History Guy hoodie right now. I, uh, I record in the basement, and it gets a little chilly down here sometimes. So uh, I had a long day today. We took uh, my 8-year-old son had a couple of cavities, and he had to get a couple of teeth pulled today. And um, You know, if you're a parent, it's never easy. Even something as simple as getting a tooth pulled, it's not easy to watch your kid go through that. So it was kind of a... A uh, difficult morning for us. And then we came back and took he and I took a big nap today. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate that. Nice, Scotty. Awesome. Uh, Grumblebee, if you just want to kind of like check in on it every so often, you, you know, please feel free to stay in the stream. But yeah, if you want to just keep kind of keep an eye on the discord every so often all right i just got to keep an eye out to make sure we don't run into these guys interesting that we're not taking the roads here do we have roads turned off for these guys no we don't they're just not 
going on the roads. I like that, actually, that they're not all going the same direction. Post-dentary, post-dentist surgery naps hit different. They do, yeah. Yeah, Phil, he's okay. Um, I am not a fan of the dentist either. I've had a ton of dental work. I've had a number of root canals. Um, I've also had four kidney stones, and I'd almost rather have the kidney stones. Not quite, but almost. Well, you know, it was interesting because, my uh, Benjamin, you mentioned the uh, funny gas. Normally, that's what they would have done for my son because the last time he had dental work done, they put him under for that. But um, because it was kind of a, a, a last-minute situation, we just made the appointment yesterday. Um, the dentist doesn't do that in their office. They would have had to refer him out, and it would have been a couple weeks before we could have gotten in. And my son was not going to last a couple weeks because he was dealing with some pain. Nathan, how's it going? Hey, Nathan, I pointed out at the beginning of the episode tonight that I uh, created a new division in one of the core of the Army of the Potomac, and your brigade was one of the ones that got moved uh, to the new uh, division. So it's not in the same division it was in the last episode. Gareth, I agree. Every every update seems to add something a little bit new. Uh, Mr. Beep, we actually had to go all the way to East Liverpool today for the uh, uh, dentist. It's about a 45-minute drive, but it's uh, right there across the river from West Virginia uh, is where we had to go. How do you make the icons darker? I don't know of a way to do that. Yeah, they gave him the numbing agent to the gum and then a shot, which the shot's the worst part. Uh, he didn't feel anything with the extraction itself. It was the shot that it was really uncomfortable for him. And I was in there when he got the shot, but then they asked me to step out while they did the actual extraction. Uh, no new units since the last episode. Uh, we did have a couple of new patrons sign up, but none of them have given me requests for their brigades yet. No, not Liverpool, <laughs> East Liverpool. It's uh, it's right on the right where Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania come together is where East Liverpool is. Alexander, hello in the Netherlands. All right, looks like we're gonna get away with grabbing this location. I don't know where he is, though. It looks like he may be heading over this way toward Mount Lookout. Where's my calf? Because I thought I sent... Oh, there's Custer right there. I sent him up here. Okay. So we'll probably go ahead and pursue them. Um, Joshua, if you're talking about the political systems uh, as they are historically, then yeah, that's totally fine. I don't have any problem with talking about historic politics. I just try to keep people out of the current politics for the discussion. Zach, um, actually, the the way it works with Rachel's Challenge is I'm actually, um, I guess, considered self-employed. It's like a contract kind of thing because I only really work full-time three months out of the year. September, October, November, I'm full-time. And then I'm kind of per diem, like per event um, after that. So, no, I, I don't have any benefits through Rachel's Challenge. Um, we get our own. Uh, is the battle in modern-day West Virginia? This is West Virginia. Um, I know Kessler's Cross Lanes is in Nicholas County, West Virginia, so I guess that's where this is taking place. There was a battle at Kessler's Cross Lanes, a minor one, and one at Carnifex Ferry as well. So I guess this is the battlefield for that. My thoughts on Jones as a leader. Decent. Um, didn't screw up badly anywhere and didn't like do anything outstanding to get himself promoted to high command. You played last night, surrounded Jackson's army. We were fighting a battle outside Winchester. I don't know specifically a way to get them to surrender. Um, it just kind of happens sometimes, depending on the situation. Yeah, I like this area, but I don't think, number one, we're going to get a fight of battle on this day because it looks like we're going to hit nightfall before too long. And number two, I don't think he's going to come at me that way. I don't know where he's at. 
Professor Jones, <laughs> like Dr. Jones, Indiana Jones. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to shift. Oh boy. How did Custer get there? There we go. I'm going to shift Custer over this way so that I can, I'm going to put one brigade down there for now. I want to send Custer over here to screen. Is there anywhere he can cross over there? It doesn't appear that he can. So I guess this is the crossing. I don't see anywhere else this river can be crossed. Oh, right here. Okay. So let's send Custer over there with the cavalry to cover that crossing. But then otherwise, we're going to go up to this one because that's really the only other place to cross. Yeah, Mr. Beep, that's because they put him in, um, I think they put him in like alcohol or something when they buried him. So he was well preserved. Well, Mason, I didn't pay anything for my son. Uh, so that's even, you know, people can talk all they want about European healthcare versus the U.S. But um, if you have a family of five and your income isn't that high, it's free. So, Zach, yes, that's okay to say, and I would concur. Woodrow Wilson was a horrible president. I, Nathan, it was a town in England that pardoned John Paul Jones. Yeah, Crazy Warrior Cat fan, we were watching it. Um, I took a break from it to do this. Um, let's take a look and see. Yeah, they're, they're somewhere... Okay, they're somewhere in this area. Because these are the objectives they've captured. So I think maybe we're going to end up engaging him somewhere there. Once I get these other units... Yeah, I don't think I, I need to send my cavalry off that way. I don't think he's over there. Let's go ahead and send the cav across. See if we can get a glimpse of what's going on over here. Anyone else want to be put in a barrel of rum when they die? There's two crossing points that I can see on this map. This is my first time fighting on this map. Uh, one here and the one in front of me. It's certainly possible he could be over here because there's no objectives over here that he, that he can grab to indicate that he's there. Let's speed up a little bit. Yeah, Kevin, we were already talking about the uh, uh, the irony of you know Civil War things. I've been telling, and well, never mind. I'm not going to say that because I'd be violating my own rule on talking modern politics. Let me move the the guns up to here. He grabbed an objective back here now. Sweets West Virginia first. They ought to fight well. These are West Virginia boys here. All right, let's get Butterfield moved up. We're going to go ahead and let them cross uh, behind the cavalry once the cav gets past. Uh, Nathan, yes, I believe McClellan would have been the operational commander for the Battle of Philippi. I'm hoping once the cav gets across, we'll get a glimpse of where these guys are. Devante, yeah, um... I think things will calm down now. They they got a uh, curfew in Washington. They called the National Guard in. I think things are going to be okay. Thankfully, nothing got... I mean, it sounds like there was some damage at the Capitol and somebody was shot. Um, but for the most part, it doesn't sound like there's too much craziness going on.
Insurrection LARPers. <laughs> All right, where are these guys? So the Cavs going to go across. Let's hope they get a glimpse. Because I don't want to start giving orders to my infantry until I get a sense of where he is. Because there we go. There's our first spotting of one of the enemy units. All right, now our, our artillery is going to open up on them. I don't think this is an area that can be crossed. But we'll find out here in a minute. And we'll go ahead and move Olmstead, the 108th Ohio Volunteers, down there. Let's see what happens when the Confederates get there. We might at the very least be able to shoot it out with them. Open up on those boys. Let's see if they cross the water. It looks like they can cross there. Or at least partially. Let's see if they can get all the way across. If he can cross there, that would be interesting. Yeah, it looks like he can. So let's send another brigade over here. Yeah, Steve, I was wondering about that being a Ford because of those roads going down there. And I guess that's all this is here, too. But this one shows as a crossing on the map. And that one doesn't. That was why I didn't think he'd be able to cross there. All right, Devil's Buckeyes, get on them. I want to see how these guys are being viewed on the map. What is Neil doing? This is not going to end well for him. What's that? Oh, unit outflanked. That's a new symbol that I haven't seen before to show that a unit's outflanked. That must be new as well. Come on, Muhlenberg. Get there. How mountainous is this map as a whole? It, it's pretty much, it's West Virginia. If you've ever been to West Virginia, that's what it looks like. It's mountains pretty well everywhere. Slam and Samia, I have not noticed that river crossings reduce morale or fatigue, but that's actually a really interesting question. We'll have to check that out when I cross somewhere. He's going to charge, which is going to end badly for him, as charges do. There, he's going to break now. So now what I think we'll do is let's go ahead and move Mitchell's brigade across on that side. Since we know we can cross there. Phil, where'd you live in Western Virginia? Well, Slam and Sammy, uh, uh, politics of the 1860s are totally fine. Randolph Hunt, Cushing, or Caliph? In a single battle, Cushing. Because dude had guts, man. He's a Medal of Honor winner, of course, now. Uh, President Obama gave him the Medal of Honor. Um, but otherwise, Hunt, just because of his expertise in the area of commanding. Country roads. Don't cross the river. That's how Napoleon's got the Russians. All right, so we're getting uh, Butterfield's brigade or division up here, along with the cavalry. 
We're going to slowly cross over here. Let's go ahead and speed things along. Yeah, I saw Alonzo Cushing's grave when I was at West Point last year. Have you heard what the Lincolnists are saying? That unconstitutional tyrant revoked habeas corpus for goodness sake. Nathaniel Lyon's body. Good question. Oh, holy cow. I'm looking at the chat and I just discovered the Confederate Army. Um, let's get, get the artillery over here, hopefully in a position where they can fire on the Confederates. And we got to get these boys up the hill before it's too late. You can see the fatigue there. Okay, so now we're getting, when there's a particular thing that's affecting the unit, we get little symbols showing up on the map. Red would be really bad. Yellow is kind of bad. So you can see they're completely exhausted climbing up this hill. That's not going to bode well for getting into action here. Woodrow Wilson had a bit of a messiah complex. He thought he was like going to be the savior of the world. He also really wasn't president the last two years he was president. His wife was. All right, is there, there's nowhere. Oh, there is a cross. There's a crossing up here. But that'll take me forever to get my men around if I go that way. Uh, I don't like having to march over this way, but I feel like I'm going to probably have to. Let's send out some skirmishers here. Wilson was also a big-time racist. One of the reasons I don't like him. Yeah, this 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 map is a rough one to fight on. Getting our artillery into position. It's going to take a while to get the orders to these other units. Why did my skirmishers fall back? Oh, hello. Here they come. You know what? Honestly. I'm going to fall Olmstead back. And rather than having these guys march all the way up there to try and engage I'd rather make him come to me hey Tom <laughs> sorry to keep you awake man I hope hope that doesn't mess you up for work too much all right how long is it gonna take for Butterfield to get his orders it's gonna take a while for him to get in position we got to get these Ohio boys pulled back. Problem 
problem is I think they're going to end up falling back because they get broken rather than... See, now his guys are getting out of breath from marching up the hill toward me. I'm going to send the skirmishers forward a little bit. Oh, come on. Break. Oh, they went back to their parent unit. Get out of here, guys. Alright, I guess it's going to be the last stand of the 108th Ohio here. <laughs> We're not going to be able to pull them out of there. So let's try to do this. Let's try to get some support for them. Good evening, Max. How's it going? They're doing alright so far. They've lost 400 men. This is just a brutal place to try and fight. I need to get McClellan across the river so that my orders will go faster. Although they're coming from the division level right now. I don't know where my cab's going. I'm going to send them over there. Dang. Maybe if we send some skirmishers out, they'll be able to engage right away. Start firing on their flank. Uh, you move just the commander, you select the commander, and then you hold down Alt. And then you right-click, and the commander will move. That was something they added at the request of people who wanted to be able to do that. All right. So hopefully we can get some fire on these guys with the skirmishers. Uh, Max, I'm doing well. Can't complain. So he's moving Taylor out now. Try to get some artillery fire on these guys if I can. They're a little out of range there. For the 12 pounder Napoleons. These Whitworths ought to be able to hit though. There we go. We're getting some fire on the flank now. Youngest Medal of Honor winner in the Civil War. I've read this at some point, but I can't remember it now. It was the kid who... It was the the kid at Antietam. Um, the uh, the musician who who played the, uh, the... I think he was a bugler or something, and he, he started helping with the artillery uh, near the cornfield. I did a video on that. I think he was probably the youngest, if not one of the youngest.
Oh no. Um, Willie Johnston. Is the youngest. He received the medal from Edwin Stanton. Some some say Secretary or the Department of Defense says he was eleven. No, thirteen, here we go. He enlisted when he was eleven. He was a drummer. Seven days battles. Oh man. Eight hundred nine hundred casualties now. My goodness. Alright guys, fall back. You've done your job. Let them come at me over here. See how they do. Get our guns firing on them. We got another another division on the way. Let's see what the numbers look like. Man, so much bloodshed in West Virginia so far. Um, so pretty even. I've actually inflicted more casualties on him, which is impressive considering. They're just now getting their couriers coming up there. They've lost 1,100 men now. The gallant stand of the 108th Ohio Volunteer Infantry. Long may they be remembered. Yeah, they're falling back now. Twelve hundred men. They lost almost fifty percent casualties. That's like Iron Brigade at Gettysburg level there. Yeah, the artillery should be firing. These guys are firing here. Own initiative. Lovely. These guys are not, but they might not have the range. Those are the 12 pound Napoleons. There's no way I'd get the artillery over there. What's this fence telling me? Oh, they're in cover, okay, that's great. All right, let's pull back the skirmishers and see what happens. See if he'll come in at me. We've got three brigades now. And we've got another division starting to cross. Actually, if we get them up this hill. Let's tell Butterfield, don't go there. Come up over here, because that will allow them to take the road, and they probably won't get as exhausted. Yeah, Patterson was originally um, in charge of going to like Harper's Ferry, Harper's Ferry and Shenandoah Valley early in the war. All right, we're trying to get the 108th back across. Devil's Buckeyes sink skirmishers back out. I told him to pull those in. Phil, that's interesting. Yeah, we don't actually talk too much about Rachel's faith just because we're speaking in public schools, so we don't talk about her the religious part of things. But um, 
it was a big part of who she was. Oh, look at the 108th, man. They're like, we are not pulling back. We're going to turn around and fire some more. Man, that I love that fighting spirit, man. These guys are like, we are not done. Yeah, he's got the high ground, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit tight here. And he's either going to have to come at me, or I'm going to send Butterfield's division along with the Cav around to hit him from the rear. We'll trap him up there. It just may take some time to do that. Okay, the 108's finally fallen back. Schweitzer, could you please call your skirmishers back? I gotta find somewhere to put these three inch guns so they can fire. I'm gonna send the 12 pound Napoleons across. USS Torsk, hopefully. It's been, uh, let's see, Boston in the first week of March, I think, was the last time I traveled anywhere to speak in a school. Oh, he is going to come at me, it looks like. Good. Let's see what he does here. He's coming in close enough that I get to fire on him. That's what I like to see. Tell Custer to get his guys around here too. Yeah, I don't think they can see when I'm moving back here. I mean, they'll see them now that they're up here. All right, Devils Buckeyes have lost 143 men. Sweet Switch Virginia first, not too bad. I'm going to send skirmishers out from these guys here. He knows what to do now. Kenobi has the high ground. <laughs> so he's trying to move up around me now. So yeah, let's go ahead and move the 100, 108th up there. Things are shifting my way now that I took another objective. Let's take a look at the numbers. So casualties, 400, or 1,400 for me, 2,100 for him. That's 12% of his force. He has no guns. And I've still only engaged with one of my divisions. These 12-pounders are actually getting up there pretty fast. I'm going to throw them in right there. Neil shouldn't be shooting. He's uh, he's broken. But maybe. We'll deal with that, though. I'll send a little cavalry charge to run them out of there. A gallant charge by Custer's men. Let's slow down from five times here. All right, Dan Butterfield. Dan Butterfield's also a Medal of Honor recipient. He has the, the largest grave marker of anybody in the West Point Cemetery. And that's saying a lot because there are a lot of high-ranking historical figures in West Point Cemetery. Oh, Benjamin, yeah, the sound would be crazy. And there'd be an interesting acoustic shadow, too. I bet there'd be interesting places around the battlefield where you wouldn't be able to hear it even though you were close. They talk about that happening in different battlefields where there were acoustic shadows where you could be really close to the firing and not hear it. 
Yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to try to bring Butterfield up and over here. Not too much in the way of high ground that they have to march going that way. And hopefully we can get these 12-pound Napoleons firing on them now. Reynolds and Sedgwick. Uh, it'll be interesting. I don't know what either one of those... I mean, I know they were career army guys, but I don't know enough about them to know what they might have wanted to do. Mr. Kurt, how's it going? Um, but hopefully they would have been a positive impact on Reconstruction like a lot of the guys were. I don't know what's going on with Neil down here. Now my cavalry is getting stuck in the water. I'm trying to cross. Let's see how numbers are going. 2,300. He's up to 20% losses. I, I can't imagine he's going to be able to sustain that when I slam into his right with my other division. His morale still 43. Mine's 35. Yes, Everett, that's correct. Seven Pines is one of the places where there was an acoustic shadow. I'm trying to capture him. Andrew, you got the game. Good luck with that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you enjoy it. I know there's a new update. I like the what I've seen of the new update so far. Let's go ahead and scoot up a little bit. Yeah, Mr. Kurt, we were talking about that earlier, how it's... You know, I, I kind of encourage people not to talk about it because um, not that I don't think people should be engaged in talking about what's going on, but um, it's nice to have an escape as well. Yeah, Joshua, I think Reynolds, had he desired it, could have been the um, commander of the Army of the Potomac, but he didn't want it. So they didn't give me the option of turning it down. They just told him he, he was taking command. All right, Butterfield's just about in position, and we're going to slam into this guy and finish this. This is just such a tough place to fight. Oh, he sees what's going on, and he's reacting to it now. He's going to bring Taylor up interested to see what he does with the rest of these guys. Alright, Burnside, push it forward. I agree, Benjamin. Um, mental health, definitely something important. That's uh, My wife, actually, you know, that's what she does for a living, is deals with people who have mental health issues. Uh, Mark Bassett, yes, the game is on Steam. Yeah, Everett, uh, Reynolds was offered the command, and then Meade was ordered to take command. The only permanent building built by the Confederacy. I actually don't know that one, Michael. skirmishers out on this side. I have a feeling this is going to start shifting in my direction pretty soon here. There, we finally got Neil to get out of there. Push forward again. Looks like, uh, for those who aren't keeping up, it looks like they're getting back to business. They're saying the vice president never left the Capitol building, and his press secretary just uh, 
just tweeted that they're um, they're going to get back to doing what they were doing when all of this happened, which is the certification of the electoral votes. So I guess they're going to move forward. Charge uphill, what could go wrong? Uh, Mr. Beep, I was actually thinking that on my other channel, we should do another Kahoot night like we did once before. That was fun. But we could do trivia on Discord as well. Joshua, yeah, I hear you. Um, he was cheering on the 6th Wisconsin, wasn't he? I think it was the 6th Wisconsin that he was kind of encouraging forward when, when he was shot. Alright, I'm going to kind of sit tight here because um, I think we're in good shape. Let's get Wilder's skirmishers forward. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Um, Gonna send skirmishers forward from these guys. So now we've got the artillery firing from over here, and we've got them on two sides here. Now let's bring Custer around to grab some of these other objectives. Yeah, Hendricks, that's an interesting question about the Confederate campaign. 64 might be a really challenging time to take it on, but yeah, I am planning to do a Confederate campaign next. Uh, Mason Mouse, it wasn't a Wisconsin brigade, it was the Iron Brigade, which uh, had three Wisconsin regiments in it. The 2nd, 6th, and 7th Wisconsin, along with the 19th Indiana and the 24th Michigan. Eh, Mark, I don't know, uh, for Pence. I think at this point, um, I think a lot of the people um, who might have felt that way maybe don't now. But, yeah, no more, no modern politics, really. But, yeah, um, I think Pence is going to do the right thing. End of the day. So we're resupplied. He's got some guys that are breaking. Be interested to see what he does here. I'm going to push down this way with both brigades. Bring Custer up here. Let's get McClellan back over here. And I'm actually going to grab the, the guns and bring them up as well. Okay, so now we're going to grab Carnifex, and then I'm going to bring Butterfield around this way. going Stanley Joshua very cool what a what a regiment to have a relative in into the river with the rebels that's kind of what we're hoping for here I don't know if any of my guns can fire from here I don't know if they have a line of sight over top of these guys so we're going to start shifting Butterfield over what's the numbers looking like now Wow, that shifted a lot. It's up to 6,000 estimated casualties for him. Well, he was going to escape regardless of what I do. Brad, what part of Minnesota are you in? I've had a couple of trips to Minnesota. Really enjoyed it. I I, I did one. Um, I was in, was it Duluth, Minnesota? I don't know. I can't remember the name of the town I was in. 
but I remember crossing this little creek and thinking, oh, I wonder what body of water that is. And it was, it was maybe 10 feet wide where I was. And here it was the Mississippi River. <laughs> I couldn't believe. But I guess, I mean, I was up near where the Mississippi River starts. It was this tiny little river, but it was the Mississippi. So let's just kind of see what he does here. I'm waiting to see if he attacks or if he pulls back. His morale is still fairly high. And I gotta get, um, let's do this. Let's have, I gotta pull all my skirmishers back in so I can re, resend them in the right direction. Yeah, Duluth is where I think I might have flown into Duluth because it was right on Lake Superior, the airport that I flew into. I'll have to look and see what the name of the town was that I spoke in. Because I remember the hotel had a sign about telling the hockey players to take their gear off before they came inside, and I thought, yeah, I'm in Minnesota. I'm going to look at a map, and I'll tell you where... I was in Minnesota that I saw the Mississippi River really tiny and then we're gonna advance Butterfield forward here all right let's zoom in on Minnesota yeah Duluth is where I flew into Duluth to the airport because that was right on there and then I went a little bit west oh it was Grand Rapids was the name of the town that I spoke in And that was where I saw the Mississippi River very tiny. Steven, we'll do another giveaway very soon, actually. Um, I was thinking about doing a bunch of giveaways for 30,000 subscribers, which I should be hitting here in the next week or two. I could go up here on the right with my cab. I was sitting here thinking oh, one of my brigades actually broke. All right, Butterfield hit him. Oh, jeez. What is Morris doing? No, no, no. Well, Hold Fast is only eight bucks, but we could certainly give out, yeah, you know, we could give out several copies of that. Yeah, that's a fair point about the calf in the woods. Actually, what I was thinking I might do is I might hold the calf back, and when these guys break, send them in. He's up, up the hill a little ways now. Devil's Buckeyes are now a, um, they're almost, almost an elite unit. That might be our first elite unit. Because they've been firing at long range a lot, and that's how they level that up. Gibraltar Brigade's about to hit level two discipline. Nazis came to power in 33, I think. Double's Buckeye is down to just 1,300 men. Or 1,600 men. Sweets is down to 1,300. See, these units, McClellan's army has seen a lot of action. long battle considering it's not a real large one 
And we're starting to achieve victory now. It's moved over to minor victory. His morale starting to drop below mine now. Look at the casualties, though. 7,000 casualties. They've suffered almost 50% casualties without breaking. Uh, AT uh, Parmentier, uh, I, I am actually the person doing the official tutorials for the game. Uh, the first two of my tutorials are in the game, but they're also on YouTube, so you can find them on YouTube as well. So just search for Grand Tactician Tutorial. You'll see mine, but you'll see other people have done some as well. Um, but but the ones of mine that are for the official like tutorials for the game are actually on Grand Tactician's YouTube page. Alright, he's all bunched up now. So let's go ahead and push this. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, the northernmost Confederate action would be in uh, St. Albans, Vermont. Not the, no, not, not the no, northernmost um, battle. That would be Selineville, Ohio, which is a um, half hour from my house. Justin, yeah, it's doing a lot better in battle, especially when the AI has a numerical advantage. He performs really well. But they have updated the game to where the AI now will defend the capital rather than just kind of de defending like West Virginia, for example. Come on, let's let's push these guys and finish this. Major victory. Okay, they're gonna break now. All right, Custer. Here's your chance, buddy. Go get him. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to hit him or not. We'll just let the cavalry get in there and at least get their shots in. Hey, I'm getting those ribs. They're falling back. We're going to let them go. There's 12 minutes left. All right, that was a good victory. Look at that, 8,000 out of 18,000 were lost in Pogue's Corps. Mr. Kurt, thank you. Appreciate that. I'm grateful. Glad you guys are enjoying this. We'll definitely... Um, no, we, we lost uh, 4,000 men. Colonel Olmstead has fallen into disgrace. He was the only one of my units who broke during that battle. I have to look and see which brigade that was. Because if that was the brigade that uh, the 108th Ohio, I feel pretty bad that they would be falling into disgrace because I asked a lot of them in that fight. Let's take a look. That was the Army of the the Ohio and Olmstead. Yeah, that's 108th Ohio. I feel bad. He he should not be falling into disgrace. Actually, his fame appears to have gone up. He's not a great commander though. I, I kind of feel like I need to replace him just on principle because he's not very good as a commander. Um, let's take a look at who we have here. That might be decent. 
Esty's not bad. Bailey's pretty good. Yeah, we'll give him a brigade. Let me look at these numbers, though, because, man, we, we got a lot of casualties going on here. A lot of these men are disabled, and hopefully some of them will return at some point. So that was a nice victory for McClellan. We'll hope, hopefully further drive him out of West Virginia. Everett, I do have War of Rights. It's been a while since I played. And Hendrix makes actually a really good point. YouTube take... Um, I, I know you guys... I, I don't want to discourage you from donating because I greatly appreciate it, but YouTube does take a chunk of that. Uh, whereas if you support on Patreon, they don't. Trent Affair, affair Resolved. Confederate Diplomats Released. Lincoln Backs Down. So he's still only at 53% toward British intervention. Uh, yeah, Tom, a unit can recover from that. Um, Confederacy calls for volunteers. They must have passed another um, thing for recruitment. Um, yeah, the, the way it works is it actually primarily goes to the commander. Like, look here at Stoneman. Stoneman's fame is through the roof. He's legendary. Now, here's the problem with that. Uh, if his fame gets too much higher than his superior you start to have a feud issue where stoneman will kind of go do his own thing uh because he's more famous and more popular and kind of get away with it actually i've got some really good commanders here and a lot of fame going on look at the fame in all of these guys because this unit has been involved this army has been in so many battles look at how high the fame is on almost every single one of these commanders Fremont different story incidentally John Fremont was actually the Republican nominee for president in 1856 he was their very first nominee Manning Force all right we're going to get him in there Manning Force was the uh the original colonel in charge of the 20th Ohio which one of my ancestors fought in he was later a brigade commander is the Army of Pennsylvania bigger since the last stream? No, but it should be. We need to add to it. That's a really small force right now. Um, wait, holy cow. Why does Bayard's brigade only have 48 men in it? That's a problem. Can we just... Dang. Dang. All right, so we're going to have to... He's going to be like that for a while now, but we're going to add a new unit to this. Uh, let's get another another Pen Pennsylvania unit going, another cavalry unit. It's going to take 14 days for them to get there. Antor, I've tried to get the Europeans to intervene, and I intentionally don't select policies that will um, drive that down, but I've never been able to get it to happen. I'm hoping as the Confederates, maybe I can get it to happen, though, when I take on the Confederate campaign. What's the Missouri State Guard doing over here? They've moved into um, western Kentucky. My Army of Mississippi still doesn't have any men in it. So well, uh, Sherman's about to take Corinth. That'll be huge. He's actually constructing a new factory there. And hopefully that'll hurt the supplies that are coming there. Oh, here's the Army of the Potomac. 37,000 men. No, no, no Delaware units, Phil. Um, let me see if we've even got that possibility yet. No, we still only have 2,400 volunteers and 900 in the draft. You need 2,500 to be able to even recruit a cavalry unit. I could do artillery. That would be about it. So we're into December. Everybody's kind of in winter quarters, at least over here. We'll probably make a spring push for Richmond. But I don't want to see too much in the way of um, attrition because I'm moving a lot in the winter.
Let's see. The Confederates haven't recruited lately. And let me look at my policies real quick, see if there's anything new that I can choose here. We do have Militia Act 4, which would um, allow me to get 36-month contracts, but I don't think I need those right now. Emancipation would push European intervention down further, which we don't want to do. Recruitment bounties would help to get more volunteers, but I actually have enough volunteers right now. So I don't think there's anything I need to do there. I could probably push Richmond right now, but um, with the attrition the way it is. Oh, the con Confederacy's printing new notes. Um, yeah, let's see what we can do. Believe it or not, taking Richmond would not bring me that close to winning the war. Trying to get the third core selected here. Our oh, third core is moving already. I need the second core. Because taking Richmond, I think, would hit him for 20 points on national morale. It would get it down to 68. It's got to be below 25 to win the war. We're going to have to take a lot more than just Richmond. Okay, where are we at? These guys are taking forever to get down there. But they've got their men now. The Army of the Mississippi. That's going to be a raiding unit that I'm going to use to kind of just m tear up Confederate rails and things like that. We've got Corinth now. That's a major rail hub that historically fell in 62. I'm waiting to see if the Army of the Potomac will move on me. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold... What is this? What is this little symbol? I don't remember seeing that before. There was a little symbol next to him, but I don't see it anymore. Um, so I'm going to hold this army here to kind of keep these armies in check. And then I'm going to send that raiding unit down into Mississippi. Because I don't want to send Sherman all the way down to Vicksburg yet. And Grant's still sitting here in St. Louis. Maybe we should pursue the Western Army. He's only got 25,000 men. Yeah, King Kong, it should. Um, if we can have a good stand in Eastern Virginia, I'd very much like to... Oh, we still hold Winchester, actually. I'd like to start grabbing his farms in the Shenandoah Valley. They called this the breadbasket of the Confederacy, and that's why Winchester was the most fought over city in the whole war. It changed hands like 60 times um, because it was the kind of the gateway to the Union taking the Shenandoah Valley. So right now he's only shifting over the Hampton Division. I may be able to take Richmond without much of a fight here around Christmas. But then he's going to converge everybody on Richmond if I do that. Army of Northern Virginia is sitting right here. Oh, he's coming at me. But I've got Phil Sheridan's first core there. Army of Northern Virginia is only... Uh, actually, that's just the headquarters. He doesn't have any men there. It is told there's fornication commonly reported amongst your troops, Sherman. <laughs> Cotton trade slows down. All right, here we go. Grant's army. We got the Western Army and an unknown unit 17 hours away. So this is cool. You're now seeing the reinforcements on the engagement screen as well. That will combined give them more men than I have. Because uh, I've only actually got 34,000 effectives, where he's got 47,000 effectives. But I've got time to defeat the first army before the second one arrives.
Benjamin, a battle site that I want to go to in Virginia, Southwest Virginia actually is the, where the Saltville raid took place. Is that a, a bunch of ancestors who were in the Kentucky units that raided Saltville, Virginia, which was a, a source of Confederate uh, saltpeter to be used in gunpowder. All right, so Grant's got to win this. The Battle of Mississippi, Missouri. <laughs> um, and where are we fighting? Wilson's Creek, yeah. Most of the Missouri battles take place at Wilson's Creek, and I've got a nice ability to, to kind of deploy out pretty far here. And he's over here, so we're going to deploy the whole army. Up here. And I want to try and defeat him. What time is it? It's 10 o'clock in the morning. So I've got most of the day to try and defeat this army before his reinforcements arrive. So we're going to we're gonna be a little aggressive here. Let's get a sense. This is a nice open battlefield too. I'm going to send the cab down this way. Get the guns right up in here. Uh, let's see. Send one on that side. And then Thomas, I think I'll hold in reserve until I get a sense of what the enemy's doing. Well, Stephen, I know they've added, um, I wouldn't call it a siege battle per se, per se but um, I know they've added the Fort Stevens battlefield, which has um, built-in parapets already that you can occupy without having to build. That's one of the maps now. And Mr. Kurt, that's one of my favorite scenes in that movie, which is one of the best Civil War movies. I was thinking about that today. Um, I think Gettysburg and Glory are my two favorite Civil War movies. And I, I don't know that I could say one more than the other. Um, but I love that scene at the end where that soldier who had previously kind of shown himself to be a racist and looked down on the men of the 54th is the guy who says, give him hell, 54th, when they march. You can kind of see that little smile on the face of Denzel Washington's character uh, in that moment. I thought that was really cool because they, they realized in that moment, at least for that moment, they were equal. So they were a part of the Union Army, and they were brothers with these white, white men that they were fighting side by side with. I thought that was really cool. I really want to do some research into the, the local men here in Northeast Ohio, who fought in the 54th Massachusetts? Because the 54th Massachusetts was a was a national unit. It was not all men from Massachusetts. There were, uh, I think, well over a hundred men in the 54th and 55th Massachusetts who were from Ohio. Uh, men came from every state to enlist in those two regiments. And I know Salem, Ohio, which is um, 15 minutes from me, uh, there were at least three boys from there. Backseat Gamer, you're 50 tomorrow. Any advice? I don't know. I'm only 43, so I can't really speak to that. Maybe some of the older folks in the room can help you with that. All right, here they are. So that did not take long. I don't think our calf is going to get where I want him to be, so we're going to going to change that up. He's actually further left than I expected, so um, I don't think we're going to quite be able to go in that area. We're going to have. I, I am going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to shift this this division over to the left. Stay at 49. 50s overrated. Mm. Andersonville is very good too and that's another place I really want to visit Mr. Beep I don't think a DNA test is going to help you find out about relatives in the Civil War that will mo mostly tell you about living relatives and also like a breakdown of where your DNA came from 
Stanley, it might be cool to write a book on the Ohio men who fought in the 54 specifically, since that's something that would be a unique look, because I think people have written books on the 54th, uh, but a unique look on the 54th, um, and it's something I could easily research since I'm here in Ohio. Maybe do biographies on some of those guys. Brad, the wind is actually, that's the, um, that's the game. I don't know what it is specifically, if it's the weather on the game or what, but that's definitely coming from the computer. Oh, it's the rain. Is it raining? Yeah, it's raining. That's why. Oh, it's snowing. <laughs> yes, the Andersonville was a, it was a TNT mini series. It's very, very good. A lot of people don't know that the story of Andersonville and what all went on there. Well, this is such a different battlefield than the last one. We're in a nice open area. Once again, we've got one brigade kind of taking on the whole army. Henry Vertz was the uh, commandant of Andersonville. And I think he, uh, he gets a bad rap because things were not tremendously worse at Andersonville than they were at Elmira, New York, for example, or Rock Island, Illinois, uh, or um, Fort Delaware, some of the, the prisons where the Confederate troops were held. I had two uncles who died at Andersonville and buried in unmarked graves there. One was in the 39th Kentucky Mounted Infantry and one was in the, um, oh gosh, I can't remember which unit the other one was in. His name was Alvin Blair, the other one. Henderson Gearhart and Alvin Blair were my two uncles that died at Andersonville. Yeah, he, uh, Andrew, Andrew, he was the only one that got tried for war crimes out of those guys. But I don't think the only person executed after the war for said war crimes. I feel like I was just reading about, I mean, other than the Lincoln conspirators, I feel like there were other executions after the war. Now i got to look it up because I can't remember who it was. Because I remember I used to always think that Henry Wirtz was the only one. But then I found out there was another one. Here we go, National Park Service. It says, myth, Henry Wirtz was the only person tried for war crimes in the Civil War. That is not true. Champ Ferguson was convicted in the fall of 1865 for the execution of at least 53 captured Union soldiers. Confederate officer Robert Kennedy was executed by a military tribunal for planting explosives around New York City, including P.T. Barnum's museum. So that's on the Andersonville um, National Park Service site. They've got information on the other people who were executed. I think he was the only one associated with a prison camp, though. If you look at the pictures of some of the guys from the Union uh, Army that were in Andersonville, they look like concentration camp survivors. Point lookouts underwater now. Oh boy. Evening, Davy. How's it going? Davy's in our new regiment for Hold Fast. We're going to hopefully organize something soon for Hold Fast. I don't like how I'm set up here so far. Get the Colorado Mountain men moved up a little bit. So Stephen Weed, historically, they're about to get a perk, was killed on Little Round Top at Gettysburg. He was the 
there were two brigades up on top of Little Round Top. There were Strong Vincent, and then there was Stephen Weed. And um, I think I'm remembering that right. He wasn't the artillery commander. I know he was killed on Little Round Top. I think he was the other. He was the the right side brigade. Yeah, he was a Brigadier General. I do play War of Rights. My wife's great-great-great-great-grandfather was held at Libby Prison. He, um, he was in the 1st Pennsylvania Heavy Artillery, and they, um, they assaulted Fort Harrison at uh, Petersburg, and he was captured and uh, had his leg amputated by a Confederate surgeon and was held briefly at Liberty Prison. Man, these guys are all bunched up. we got to get this figured out. Let's go single line to Potter's Division. And then get him wait till they give that order and then I'll move them. Yeah, Vincent uh, Vincent and Weed were the two brigade commanders on Little Round Top and they both were mortally wounded at Gettysburg. Hazlitt um, was, yeah, Hazlitt, Bjorn, you're right, is the artillery commander. The two of them had a conversation and Hazlitt was killed while talking to a mortally wounded Weed. I always confuse the two. Hazlitt leaned over to listen to something Weed was whispering and was shot dead. I've been to, uh, actually one of my videos on my other channel is my visit to the Erie Cemetery in Erie, Pennsylvania, which is where um, Strong Vincent is buried. Why don't I have a left flank? Because I... These guys all bunched up and they don't want to get into position for some reason. It's really messing me up. And my cavalry, on the other hand, um, is still obeying their original orders. There we go. Now let's get this flank sorted out. I also need to kind of get this all shifted over a little bit. We're all just kind of shooting it out right now. I don't know that is necessarily a good thing for me. I do have better morale than him, so that helps. How are we with our artillery? It looks like all the artillery is firing. Got 12 pounder Whitworths. Look at that, Bernie and Sedgwick, guys that are historically were major generals. They're only captains right now. And Osterhaus, he actually, he's a German born soldier who I believe commanded a division under Grant during the Vicksburg campaign. Yeah, Strong Vincent was uh, Chamberlain's brigade commander. He was posthumously promoted to brigadier general. is a confederate force out here so I got to be careful with this yeah. all right let's fill in the gap right here Here's our storming Mormons right here. They're about to get their perk. Morgan volunteers already have theirs. Oh, 
always been a fan of Strong Vincent. I thought he uh, was killed before we could really find out what he could do. He was a young guy. He was in his mid-20s. Um, I think he was a Harvard graduate. He had gone to law school there and come back and was setting up a law practice in Erie when the war broke out. Cab's coming down. All right, so let's see who we've got here. We've got the... Uh that's the Colorado Mountain Men there. Elias Dennis there. So these are really just skirmishers that I've been fighting with this whole time here. Alright, Weed's got his perk. I'm going to give them the sharpshooter because when you're firing at long range you level that one up pretty fast. Oh Bjorn, very cool. Was it a specific uh, regiment within Vincent's brigade that you were a part of? Well final eclipse, Sherman wasn't going to be brought before a court because his side won and that's usually how that goes. Really just shooting it out for a while here. Why is the cav coming back up here now? Before they go over there. That's weird. I don't know what the cavalry is doing. So let's give these guys a long range order. And then get them moved up. Start getting into his flanks. Here's the problem. We've got to, we've got to win this battle on day one before he gets his reinforcements. Let's see how things are looking. So far, so good on the casualties. 706 for me, 1500 for them. I think a lot of that goes to the uh, the fact that I've got better weapons than he does. So mine are much more accurate. I've got pretty much all rifles. Yeah, this will be the last battle for the stream today. time is it in America? Uh, here in the east, on the east coast, it's 8, 10 p.m. Uh, so in California, it'd be 5, 10. Yeah, we're going to have to push through these skirmishers. we got to get out his main line. Anytime you want to go to where I ordered you, it would be great. Hey, Benjamin. Anytime, man. Thanks for coming by. just an all-out shootout all the way along the line it's going to come down to who breaks first and I think it's going to be him because we got to a minor victory already our morale is significantly higher plus we got him flanked so I think we're looking good here 
I'm gonna go ahead and speed things up a little bit. Oh, what's going on there? Turn around, Waterhouse. Casualties are going to be crazy from this battle because we have been shooting it out for a long time. Interesting, these guys haven't lost anybody. He's got some artillery up here. What's Abbott doing? There we go. Now he's gonna he's gonna start shifting to deal with me. Abbott's just kind of in his own little world over there. All right, we broke somebody on this side. So here's what I want to do now. I want to shift a couple of these brigades over here. Bring more around this side a little more and then make room for pots to move in right there. Oh, Bjorn, I didn't know that was the unit. Um, I knew that Hancock had given orders for Reynolds to be sent home to be buried. Uh, Mr. Beep, yeah, that's what we were just talking about. I think a, a Kahoot stream on the other channel would be fantastic. Um, I have the GPS. <laughs> um, yeah, let me let me set something up, and we'll do a Kahoot stream on Saturday. That would be a lot of fun. Try to do it on a time that's not too late for our European friends. All right, I think we've got these guys plenty of time before his reinforcements were able to arrive. Let's push the cab forward. out our brigades here. I'm gonna... No, no, no. Here he goes with the skirmishers again. Let's look at the uh, the numbers. Look at that. 1,300 casualties for me. 5,000 for him. But we outnumber him 2 to 1, so that shouldn't be a surprise. Oh, the 3rd uh, Cavalry Brigade. It's the Australian Light Horse that's been kind of doing their own thing. I'm going to send them over here. There we go. we got another unit broke. That's a major victory. They're going to probably start pulling out here in a minute. There they go. Perry, that's very cool. Uh, Joshua, I have been to Historicon, though it's been many years since I was there. I used to go every year. Uh, Cold Wars was there, too, um, uh, there in Lancaster. Yeah, uh, I was there probably four or five times. I remember one time having a really awesome battle um, with a couple of British guys. Uh, and and there, Well, there were a bunch of us. There were like 20 of us, but I was on the same team with a couple of British guys. We were doing the Battle of Midway, uh, and I was one of the American... Um, dive bomber squadron commanders. It was a lot of fun. Alright, he's pulling out. We'll go ahead and push forward a little bit, but this battle's over. Yeah, let's get the um, get the guns. We can get past his infantry. Get 
the guns, baby. Get him. Colonel Henry Moore, he's going to be the one responsible for grabbing those guns. Looks like they're going to get him, too. I'm going to slow down while this is happening. I'm going to send the cab over to deal with those skirmishers. It never ends well when you charge, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to get these guys to keep from firing on them. All right. So yeah, if you guys want to be a part of that Kahoot we're going to do this weekend, it'll be like a trivia game and everybody competes against everybody. Wait, hold on. Did somebody surrender? Graham's Brigade surrendered. Excellent. Okay. Um, just the link in the description will take you to my other channel uh, and you can subscribe on there and I'll post something about it on there looks like Blanchard is uh, broken let's see if we can send the cav to deal with them so we'll see the results of this battle and then we'll call it a night I think and we'll do another stream on this game maybe Sunday. Yeah, please hit that like button if you would. All right, that was a disaster for the Confederacy and Sterling Price. So we'll take a look at uh, where things stand. We're about to hit 1862. But I hope everybody stays safe, and uh, if you're a praying person, please pray for our country, that everything kind of gets sorted out without any more major issues. Enemy's national morale dropped by 1.26, and our military experience went up by 1.57. That's huge. Appreciate you guys being a part of it tonight. How do you move a commander in the field, Mr. Kurt? You select the commander, and then you hold down the Alt button, and then right-click where you want him to go. Yeah, Phil, thanks. Uh, I don't know how the Browns are going to do. We're missing all of our offensive coaches with COVID and several players as well. So, um, All right, so here's the status at this point. National morale, 83 for me, 87 for him. Uh, men fielded, I've got a, a good advantage there. Total casualties, uh, 67,000 for me, 116,000 for him. Uh, so that's kind of where things stand, but we'll pick it up from there next time. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again soon.